It was definitely on Kristen's heart before mine to adopt, even while we were having our own bio kids. And I was reading a book by Francis Chan, it had nothing to do with adoption, but in the, in the preface of the book, it was one line in, uh, it was not even a full sentence, but he just mentioned that, you know, where to take care of the, the widows and the orphans. Mm -hmm. And it's a line in the Bible that I've read multiple times, but it was something about that time where I just stopped in my tracks and I said, I said, oh no, <laughs> we have to do this. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that we have to do. Well, at that time we had the three boys and they were ages six, four, and two. I felt like our plates were full. So yeah, we ignored God for a good six months. We finally went to a- It's an uh, informational meeting. An informational meeting. At an adoption agency. Yeah, yeah, at FCCA. And from that night on, we've been in the process for almost six years yeah, or over six years? six years. So many closed doors happened. We would fly back and forth to Sacramento um, to do family matching events. And there was one boy, oldest of seven kids. Yeah. We would see him time after time. And we just, we took to him right away. And he took to us and we would debate like, okay, can we build a bigger house? Can we move? What can we do to bring in all these kids? Cause they all need a home and we're connected. And he was just like, we go home with you. Yeah. He asked us to adopt him and his siblings and bring him home. <laughs> um, so the process breaks your heart because you just see so many kids that need a home and a family. Um, and it's hard for us. We stopped telling our boys about kids that we were pursuing because it's hard on our, it's hard on us as adults. So we can't, we could not imagine what our boys were going through. We had a safe families meeting here at our home and also a yeah. child development expert to come and talk to us. Her name is Olivia. We met her for the first time uh, that day. Several six, six months, months later, later yeah. our phone rings. Mm -hmm. It was Olivia and one of her adopted children, Thomas. The birth mom called her and said, I'm giving up my other son. Can you take him? So she calls me and she she's crying to me on the phone. She says, Elijah needs a family. It's Thomas's half brother. We can't take him. Can you please? adopt him, can you please take him? And of course, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, we'll take him. So I ran outside to Eric and I told Eric the news and he was in disbelief. So Eric and I remember praying very specifically, God, if you want him to be a part of our family, break down every earthly barrier, just, just demolish every barrier. And it wasn't but a couple hours later, we get a phone call saying that the Virginia social worker, birth mom and Elijah are gonna get on an airplane the next morning. They made it to California, put him in a white car. And drove him here. Drove straight to our house. He didn't make one noise on an hour and a half drive. No smile. No peep. And he got here and I I got him out of his car seat and we saw the boys and big ear to ear smile. And the social worker said, that's the first smile I've seen from him in hours. <laughs> he was just mesmerized with his brothers. And to have a social worker pull up and there's a boy that doesn't have a family and he needs family. And we'd been praying for him specifically all those years. It's a very surreal feeling because the boy's in your arms um, and you just promise him that you'll take care of him and love him forever, and here we are. What are the days? How many days later? <laughs> uh, he'll been in the foster system 582 days. I really wanted to get a little brother. He was the cutest baby I ever saw. I think the fact that he's going to be my brother. I love him so much, and it's really awesome. I'll, I'll feel very awkward with my mom crying, like, uh and I'm excited about like the moment when she says yeah, that he's in our family. And so now we move to adoption on Friday. Um, to have the court finalize it. Um, for me, 
I want that future for Elijah. I want him to feel secure. I want him to know that he has a family forever. Um, so for me as his mom, to be able to watch him get that, um, that means everything to me. Because no kid should ever have to wonder who their family's gonna be. To our sweet Elijah, today we become your mommy and daddy and you become our son forever and always. We remember the first time we heard about you all the way in foster care in Virginia and prayed to God that if we were meant to be family, that he would break down every earthly barrier to bring us together. Just two days later, you arrived at our home in California. We prayed for you and God led you straight to us. We loved you before we knew you. We remember your first smile, the moment daddy lifted you out of the social worker's car. I remember holding you close, whispering to you that you are safe and I will love you and protect you forever. And now here we are, 582 days later, and we can't imagine life without you, and we don't have to. Throughout your life, we will support you through any pain and heartache as we navigate the complexities of your adoption together. We will also always celebrate you and show you how you are wanted, chosen, and loved. Welcome home, little fella. Love mommy and daddy. Good job. Should we kiss? Congratulations, he's all yours. <laughs> Elijah, he lights up any room he walks in. He's, he's so joyful. I am blown away with the spirit that God put in him. Um, he's so happy. He's, we're just incredibly proud of him. He's attached so well to our family. Our family it's completely bonded with him. The, our, our boys, the four of them, they were meant to be brothers oh, yeah. all along. They, they love him. From the instant. And he's, he's been a fracasso. He's just as loud as the <laughs> He's just as loud. I just remember the first night that he was in our home, the social worker said to us, um, she told us two things about Elijah. Yeah, we learned only two things about him. He's, <laughs> he's not a good sleeper and he's allergic to fish. Like anaphylactic allergic to fish. Like you need an EpiPen with you at all times. And then we learned he's an amazing <laughs> sleeper and he's not allergic to fish. <laughs>